welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. This is the official start <laughs> of um, uh, Teacher Teaching Teachers tonight. Uh, it's May 28th, uh, 2014. And um, I'm calling this an ideation, which means, I don't know, I, I was a little tired when I was putting this together. <laughs> no. I, it, it, so we have with me and us uh, friends, new friends, old friends, and um, we're going to talk about connecting, if I can say it that way. Um, I will introduce people and we'll get around to saying who everybody is here and what our theme is, but um, there are people coming in right now, so let's make sure that it's all working. If you guys don't mind, let me introduce, I'm going to call you guys the uh, design shop, right? A team. Sure. Uh, my, we, we have a, um, an official name here, but and then and then we'll get um, others in here as well. But um, Victoria, hi. 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 Victoria, we were just doing introductions, and I know you just got here, but um, introduce yourself. We're a team of four, and I think we called ourselves what? The Magma Corps. Magma Corps. Um, but that didn't go too far. But anyway, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it was a great idea. Anyway, so everything's a great idea. So, uh, Victoria, you're an MIT student. Do you want to introduce yourself a little bit and tell us why you're here tonight? <laughs> Sure. Um, I'm a freshman at MIT, or I guess now I'm going to be a sophomore, um, and uh, I'm studying computer science, so I'm really interested in technology and how that can be used in the classroom, um, and I did robotics in high school, and that was a big part of what got me interested in alternative education, I guess, so that's why I took part in the design shop. Cool. And, we're gonna, and somebody's going to help us des define design shop here in a second. Um, education design shop. Well, what, just say what high school you went to. I went to Castellet High School in the Bay Area. Um, they have a pretty big uh, lab that's involved with the lab at Stanford on alternative learning. Yeah, so that some of the connections we were making too. Kevin, if you don't mind, introduce yourself. Sure. I'm Kevin Osborne, and I'm a longtime engineer, but I've also uh, gotten really interested in teaching about making, which I think is really a powerful concept for um, learning all kinds of things. It's sort of a gateway to learning anything uh, because it requires math, science, uh, art, uh, design skills, things like that to, to make things. So, and, it, and it's, it's interesting because you get to make stuff. <laughs> and so um, I, um, I quit my job about a year ago, and I've been doing uh, designing uh, workshops uh, for mostly for libraries and things like that, um, as well as you know continuing to consult and do you know uh, create products. And uh, I'm very interested in open source. Uh, I do everything I develop for the libraries and stuff like that. I publish on my blog uh, baldwisdom.com, and um, I uh, went to the uh, Edu Design Shop thing at MIT, which was a uh, uh, an interesting workshop that was was free, but you had to get in. And so uh, Paul, uh, John, Victoria, and I uh, all got in, and we were formed into a team where we were to use the design principles that we used, at, uh, we learned at the workshop uh, to solve some problem in education. So that that's a good introduction. Great. Cool. All right. And. Um, Right before you were showing us what a great room you're in, maybe you will get a chance to shuffle around in there more. Jonathan. Hi, uh, I'm Jonathan Schmidt. I'm a director of technology at a K-8 school in, in, uh, outside of Boston here. And uh, we're really interested in um, design thinking and making and, and how we can bring that to our students. Um, I taught for seven years before becoming a director of technology. And then um, I was at the EDU design shop. Um, we were, uh, I was lucky to be selected and also lucky to have a few students who, uh, some of our middle schoolers who took part in the, in the uh, workshops and the teams as well. Uh, Chris Sloan, welcome. You want to say Hi. hello? Yeah, um, so I teach English and media at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. And uh, as far as making goes, um, a lot of the media that we do obviously is about making products, whether they be you know video or audio or print things. Um, and then also this year, coincidentally, um, I did a lot of reading um, around kind of studio approach to education. So 
experimented with some kind of studio thinking and design thinking uh, in the both the English classes I do and then also in the production classes that I do. And then lastly, um, this summer I teach in Ireland and we're um, going to connect with a maker space called 091 Labs, which we connected with last year in Galway, Ireland. So I'm pretty, I'm really interested in what you all have to say about design thinking and making. Very cool. So we were a team of four, led by uh, say her name for me, guys. Um, who who is our leader? Do you guys remember? <laughs> we had a facilitator. Um, yeah, what's her name? Uh, well, well, sorry, I will look it up here in a second. That's what we get for being so casual. Um, Monica, though, Monica Hardy has joined us, and and Joe Paricio uh, has joined us. Joe had a really exciting uh, evening with some awards uh, out there in Oakland. Um, but um, Monica, do you want to say hello? And Monica, if, if you don't mind, are you are you frozen or are you there? Hello, there you are. Monica, hello. You're trying to get in. She's working on. All right. So, uh, <laughs> as organized as ever here, but I think we have a great <laughs> great group of people, and we're going to make this happen. So we came up with an idea, and then they gave us a, a bit of cash to, to to further the idea. The cash doesn't matter so much, I don't think. Uh, maybe it will. I don't know. But um, so this is our kind of reunion, getting back together. And the idea that we came up with was match make. And Kevin, you were our spokesman on that. Um, do you want to talk to us about what match make is a little bit? Uh, sure, sure. I, I guess um, it started with, so w one of the ideas that we had was, was to uh, create project-based uh, curriculum that uh, would allow people to make things and stuff like that. And then, um, but but the problem is that in, in in implementing that, some teachers may not feel comfortable with the skills that are necessary, or and um, and um, and it also it kind of limits it. So uh, we 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 have the idea of actually bringing the idea of connecting people, uh, makers, people who uh, artists, inventors, people who make things. Um, um, to together to uh, with with teachers to work out uh, interesting projects that they could they could use in the classroom, uh, and then um, the end goal of that would be that they would actually create materials that other people could then reuse, and uh, it would be a whole community and people could uh, sort of uh, review this stuff, add to it, remix it, things like that, and. Um, we pitched this with some uh, brilliant uh, uh, hand-drawn slides from Jonathan, and um, and we uh, we actually were one of the, uh, the the sort of the top winners, uh, and we actually have a we, we won a small prize that we we, we were uh, hoping to uh, figure out some way to make use of. <laughs> uh, so so that's uh, is that 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 is that uh, a reason that gets that gets close, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I, I think I think without going into a lot of detail, we want to also talk about the problem we were trying to solve, the problems we were trying to solve. Okay, sure. And and one of them one of them I think is um, like who a maker is. Like when we look at your uh, behind you, Kevin. There we we know you're a maker, right? And you're an engineer for all those years. But we were trying to think about adding to that list and expanding the idea that it's not just people who do, I don't know, the, the fabricating kind of making, or that, but it's other people in the community, perhaps, who could be makers. So as you can tell, this is an idea that is still in the making, but <laughs> as we go. But Jonathan, maybe you could talk about uh, a project that you did. I, I was kind of struck by the story you told at one of our sessions where you were able to find uh, like an expert in the field, come in and work with your kids. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's so kind we, of an example. Yeah. So one of our science teachers, um, we came really excited about design thinking, the design engineering process uh, this past year, 
and uh, um, one of our science teachers decided to kind of flip her entire classroom around um, a central question and kind of le take that question to wherever it would uh, take the class. So the students uh, um, try to figure out how they might uh, map all the trees on the campus um, mm -hmm. into a physical way and uh, and 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 the we kind of uh, got ahead of the students a little bit and tried to figure out some possibilities that they might um, come across. But we let them kind of explore dead ends and uh, re, re bring themselves back to a, a core and and uh, and really let them kind of lead the way. Um, so in the end, we um, had students uh, looking into is an iPad GPS uh, accurate enough to um, to map the trees accurately? Is is a uh, you know what's the professional level kind of uh, mapping? Um, backpacks that the professionals use, and is that uh, either financially feasible or or or, or worth the expense? Um, and in the end, uh, we brought in some experts to help our students as they kind of tackle these questions. And um, uh, we had a surveyor um, uh, Skype in with the class. Um, we had uh, some some uh, professionals who had done some work at the school before um, meet with the class, and then I kind of came into the class as uh, someone who. Uh, knew a little bit about GPS technology and explained how it works and and how accuracy can be affected. Um, and uh, it really uh, uh, the the science teacher and I actually did a presentation um, on this, and I'll I'll post a link to the presentation just a couple weeks ago um, in, at a at a technology conference in Vermont. And um, and one of the things that she really took away was that um, any expert is entirely fascinating to the students and really captivated the audience. Um, she tried not to take it too personally. Um, but but she she found that uh, bringing experts in um, really went that met a need that the students had identified was really important. So instead of just uh, saying, "Hey, I think it'd be great for you to talk to this expert," um, have the students identify a problem and then meet their need with somebody who has the answers, and it really uh, activated the whole thing. The students became interested in the subject, and then the expert was especially um, you know vibrant because they were they were solving the problem that the students needed. Cool. And if I haven't identified yet, it shouldn't all be coming back to me every time, so please keep breaking in. Um, but let me get Victoria to speak up again. What's uh, sort of your take on our idea and where what you've thought since? Maybe. Um, <clears throat> sure. So I really like the idea because, um, I mean, I just got out of high school and I could see something like this working very well. Um, just in terms of having people from in, from industry working on projects with students in the classroom. Um, it's hard for me to think of any specific examples of times like that I actually had experiences like that in the classroom, but um, outside of school, like with robotics, working with mentors and things like that, I think that was really valuable for me. So that's why I think this is a cool idea. Can you tell a more specific story about that when you were Sure. Um, let's see. I mean, we worked with a lot of different mentors for robotics. Um, like one person who, uh, my neighbor actually, has a shop in his garage. And I think he kind of was, I think he was really excited to work with us because he's kind of just doing his own thing and isn't really utilized by anyone else. Um, and he's really skilled at, you know, welding, uh, wood, woodworking and stuff like that. So I kind of just asked him if he could teach me how to weld on the side. And I thought that was a really cool project. And I actually learned, you know, a lot about the science of welding and, you know, how you, all the different metals work and stuff like that. So that was really cool. Yeah, so, and I want to bring Monica in here as quickly as we can. But that's, I, she uh, has played with the word, and I like the word synchronicity, but that's what I think you just described there. But how did you know about that neighbor, and how did you get him involved? And how, doesn't he have a job? And, you know, I mean. <laughs> um, so I'm not quite sure. I guess we're family friends with them because they live right next door. Um, mm -hmm. And he had mentioned that he had a shop a couple times. I had seen his garage because he welds uh, like right next to my house. So um, I'd seen him welding before. I thought it would be cool to learn. Um, and so I just kind of asked him about it, and he started giving me welding lessons. Um, I guess he did have the extra time. Uh, I like would I would also help him with projects he was working on so you know I could help I could learn how to weld by you know helping to weld some of his projects for him um, but yeah 
Chris, do you have any? Can you help us? Uh, you know, be yeah, the I guess. Um, person? Well, from the outside, and because sometimes I need things uh, repeated. Um, I mean, the problem that you're seeing that you're all coming at from different angles. So you know, you've got Victoria with kind of this recent background of connecting with this these mentors through a robotics experience, and then you've got Kevin as an engineer and Jonathan as a tech person. And Paul is kind of the all-seeing guru kind of character. I think. <laughs> now, but I mean, the problem I is to get in the way. Go ahead. Like, basically, it's that there's all these kind. There's um, this uh, cognitive surplus in your community of these makers and these students who need that. Yeah, or is is that the problem that we're working on? Yeah. What do you think, guys? Well, I, I think I think that the, the the problem that we identified was, and, and you know, and and I, and I don't want to get too too much outside of my my sort of realm of expertise and stuff, but uh, is that um, uh, doing things sort of project based or that are uh, that that require you to do to pull on a lot of different skills and to to learn things in a self-directed way, because uh, because you need you need to learn something in order to accomplish something, uh, is is uh, is much more exciting than having someone teach at you or um, something that you're going to be tested on in your you know your standard assessment and things like that. And uh, and um, um, the the way that we can prepare people for the future, and I think this this came up in our in our discussions quite a bit was was that it was about future proof proofing uh, for, for the students in that the world of the future uh, you know the whole idea that you can go to college and get a good job is not no longer like a given uh, and that 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 you need to be uh, creative and flexible and, and and able to tackle new challenges and that uh, um, current sort of schooling doesn't do much to prepare people for that kind of challenge but um, but introducing them to people who uh, do that kind of problem solving and also you know giving them problems to solve uh, and then an opportunity to um, you know draw on resources to solve those problems uh, is is a good way of of introducing that kind of thing. I think um, one of the things I kind of felt about it was that um, when we're trying to set up the, these type of projects and the project based learning um, and make these introductions. A key thing for us to kind of do is to take away the the stumbling blocks and the things that make it hard for that to happen. And one of the most common ones is how does a teacher make a connection with a welder or um, a writer, a novelist, or um, you know, a cartoon, a cartoonist, or or whatever um, might fit the project. And a lot of times, I feel like I feel that I fill that role, and I try to um, in in my schools, I try to match the the teacher with the resources they need. Or the uh, you know um, an expert um, at the time, and and you're the um, IT guy, right? Yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm the IT guy. It's a little uh, untraditional uh, approach to it, which mm -hmm. I think is is a good thing. But the um, but I think that's that's what we were trying to do for a, for for ev for every school for every teacher is is how do we uh, help take away the cruft around um, making those connections, mm -hmm. and and w originally we were really focused on how do we supply resources. And we were thinking along the lines of, of um, you know, sending kits or a bus or something else. And then we ended up kind of coming around to the idea that um, the, the human connection is almost more important than the, the resources. And, and setting that up really ignites something in, in students and in the classroom um, even more than just sending instructions and, and, and you know, a, a kit to put together or something else. No matter, even though I think those resources and things are very important as well. But that's kind of where we decide to focus. Mm -hmm. So, Monica, could you jump in here at this point and just tell us what you've heard and explain your kind of bringing people together around curiosities? And let's see where this conversation goes, if you don't mind. But you'll need to introduce yourself a little bit. I see you. Monica, are you hearing us? Monica, Monica, hello? Come on. What's going on? Monica Hardy, are you there? Uh, yeah. oh. Looks like she's frozen. 
Yeah. Looks like she's frozen. Okay, Monica, try again. <laughs> we'll keep uh, going. So yeah, go ahead I guess to follow up then, um, like the human connection that um, uh, Jonathan was just talking about is great, and that's um, kind of you know what I've done to a limited perspective in my own situation, but it's very limited, right? So I guess your project, the reason that someone then gave you a little something was that there's some kind of technological fix that you're thinking of, or no? So, so the solution that we ended up coming up with was is a is basically a matchmaking website that would put uh, educators and makers and a broad um, definition of what a maker is um, together. So uh, uh, either a maker could go to the website and um, kind of explain uh, through uh, you know the system what they're interested in and be um, connected with a list of of teachers who have signed up or the opposite way around um, and and try to try to kind of create those connections through that. And, I, you know, it's, we, we'd have to keep talking, but my feeling was, and Jonathan, you found, you, you, you found a site where there are, is somebody who connects experts in industry with schools, but that's mainly through um, video and, and Skype, I think, as I looked at it. But, yeah. but, but I think our idea is to, to actually have as many ongoing relationships as we can between makers in the community and teachers. At least that's my feeling about it. Yeah, and, and I, I, I think I think that I mean the the matchmaking part is and it's done with other sites and stuff like that in terms of like bringing people into classrooms and stuff like that. But um, but I think it's important for there to be some kind of uh, like work product uh, or activity that um, that you know, not necessarily I mean they could be classroom visits and stuff like that. But but an opportunity for people to share stuff that they've worked on together in the site as well. And that way, other people can then take that on and remix it, and then bring it into their own community, find their own welder or whatever like that, uh, as well as having you know sort of uh, 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 the virtual meetings, which would allow it to be accessible, like a, a maker, like here I'm I'm in Massachusetts, and I could help out with with a teacher in Kansas or something like that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but 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 the idea to have a site where people can can collaborate as well as be match made. Um, is is also very important, and that 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 they that they end up producing stuff kind of like an instructables, but it's much more uh, a living living documents that then are used by the community uh, as sort of um, uh, conversation starters. In uh... Uh, I think the the problem that started to emerge as we dive dove into it a little bit more was how do you how, what's the best way to um, form these relationships so that they're productive for both sides? And Kevin's uh, Kevin talking about that idea there of uh, of kind of these projects that can be something that helps them gel around was important as well. So, um, and I think that's still what we're kind of working on is what's the how's the best way to to make these rich and and ongoing or or as powerful uh, um, you know partnerships as possible. Okay. I see Monica moving in the icon there. So I think you will be able to hear you this time. Monica. I don't. I Good. just keep going out and. But so um, let's get as much of you as we can right now. Okay, so. Um, yeah. I think one thing. Intr that introductions quickly, sorry. I'm in. I'm Monica Hardy in Loveland, Colorado, and I've been kind of experimenting with. Um, a vision that we have of what if the city is the school? Well, if it if it was, and if you did it globally, that would be very chaotic. So we do need some kind of technology or something to do a match.com to ground the chaos. And our focus is, has been on curiosity as our only tag um, and our only label. So to some of the conversation I've been listening to, um, if you want it to be sustainable, um, what you said earlier, Jonathan, about allowing the whoever you know, call it a kid, call it a teacher, whoever, allowing that person to come up with the problem first or the curiosity first. Um, because it, then it, if, if you don't do that, you don't have that person who's just going crazy, insatiable curiosity. That's what the mentor loves. You know, that's what, that's what draws the mentor in, that there, there's this person that's just crazy about the thing that you're crazy about. So there's sustainability with the mentor. And I think in the past what we've done is we create the problems because we're supposed to. We're the teachers. We have the you know common core and all this. So we create the problems that would be suitable. 
Um, but then we don't have that hunger and thirst that not only feeds the, the learner but the person that's mentoring. Um, so that would be my one from what I've heard is as much as possible have the whatever that's going to be studied come from the individual. Well then, then you get the gamut. Now you've got the gamut of so much. My vision is that that platform that we're talking about ends up being the person's head, seven billion heads. But the thing that's used most right now, or could be used most possibly, is Wikipedia. Um, because, I mean, there's so many people that want to have these platforms where people connect. Um, but we're missing that adjacent possible. Um, if you want to zoom out, global, local, global, local all the time. Um, and it doesn't have to be Wikipedia, but that's one reason why we've kind of thought curios Curiosume was close to what we were looking for because they use Wikipedia, something that people have already crowdsourced on. And wouldn't it be greater if we all crowdsourced there even more? What, it, what if there was one place where you know, we had a curiosity and, and, and when we left that place, we left what we'd worked on in regard to that curiosity. And then the tech did what tech does, takes tons of data, all over the place data, and makes those connections for us and prompts us to, you might like this mentor, you know, he's in your town or she's, you know, in Australia. So, yeah, team. <laughs> Ask Monica questions about her project here, because you've been developing this for a couple of years, yeah? And so you could get more specific as we go, but I, and it's different, it's not the same thing, but it's still, I think, interestingly related. Well, I could... Yeah, I go can, ahead. I can share just how it would play out on a day-to-day -day basis, just to jumpstart it until... Because mm -hmm. right now... Okay, we'll come back when she can, I guess. <laughs> Got a little trouble in Loveland there. Um, but she'll come back, I think. So uh, did I, I don't want to break our heads or anything, but did that make any sense, um, given what we're thinking about? Or, or how, like it's a big, it's, it's like both a more individualized idea and also a bigger idea obviously but so so uh, I, I, I so I, I, I'm afraid I didn't quite and un quite understand uh, is, Monica, uh, is her pro project uh, around um, uh, um, collaborating on existing content on like on Wikipedia or creating creating your own wiki based on uh, projects that you're curious about when she or somebody else who understands this what comes back, they'll have to explain it. But it's something about using the coding system, the, the tagging system, I'm sorry, in Wikipedia to identify um, who you are and then having an app that identifies your curiosities and then that, that app would then identify people maybe locally who could connect with you. Mm -hmm. I, I did a very bad job there. I think maybe not. Monica, do you want to say, you were saying more how it would play out in day, in day to day. You're back, and I think. Yeah. This is ideally, you know, it, it would simply be a person in an echo chamber type space where they didn't feel like they were proving anything. No one was going to like or dislike what they said. They would, they would share what they're curious about that day. It could change tomorrow, whenever. And again, the technology that can have you lost me again? Nope, you're good. Okay. The technology that can handle that much information, it doesn't matter, you know, that we're throwing out a new curiosity every day. Um, and then you connect by that. Um, so until something like that is in place, um, again, back to what Jonathan said, just having the individual come up with the problem first, with the curiosity first, and then being facilitators and listening, you know, and trying to make those connections. Um. Yeah, I, 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 I like, I really like that idea. I think that um, that the challenge is um, is controlling didacts like myself. <laughs> so, um, like, um, uh, how do you need to be controlled, Kevin? Go ahead. Yeah. So, so. Um, 
so uh, I, I I have this um, so I I am um, um, when, when, oftentimes when people approach me and they're curious curious about something, my my first reaction is to tell them everything I know, and um, you know and immediately people glaze over and they you know it's like it's not it's not a very um, uh, useful interaction if you will. Um, I I came up with this idea for um, a, to to try to to counter that, which was to um, set something up where I tell people nothing, and so I call it ducky bots, and I do this thing where I I give kids a bunch of rubber ducks and some motors and some batteries, and I say uh, your job, you know, like these ducks are lazy, make a move. And they get some duct tape, and there's bits of foam and stuff like that, and and they learn all kinds of things about physics and stuff like that. But I don't tell, I basically don't tell them anything. If they, if they want to ask questions, I, you know, I'll I'll try to give them as little guidance as possible. But um, but uh, I I love the idea of um, giving people a resource to explore their curiosity. Um, but uh, the I think that one of the natural reactions is is to go where we've been before, which is to teach, uh, is to lecture, uh, and things like that. And 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 I think that the the core idea around making, which is what we kind of sort of were orbiting around in our our thing, is that um, by uh, having a project that you want to make, you have to learn stuff. And you learn stuff by doing it, and you might have to get somebody to show you how to do stuff. Um, but um, but I think that there's something really interesting here with in terms of like marrying the two ideas of um, of sort of free form, like here's something I want to know know about, and can that develop into a project? And maybe it doesn't develop into a project. Maybe it's just a little one-off thing. That's a really cool. That's really it's a really interesting uh, intersection there. I think. One of the things that Monica was saying that really kind of struck with me, and I was thinking about this since our since that weekend, was we were coming up with this question of what's the motivation for the maker in the relationship, and and why would they want to be a part of it? And I think Monica kind of nailed it with um, when two people are really curious about the same subject, and uh, a more experienced person sees that curiosity budding in in the new learner, it's really exciting. And and to go off of what Kevin was saying, I'm wondering if um, if if there's the sweet spot of finding someone with expertise, but who is who is also for the mentor for the maker, but who's also becoming who's who's learning the subject kind of along with the student, I think there's a, a lot of power in um, like the adults learn co-learning with the with the with the um, the learner, um, not that it's a child, but whoever that might be, and uh, and I, I'm wondering if there's this you know can there be a way for someone who has expertise in one area who wants to learn about another that might dovetail well together to then come along with someone else and, and that can be a really powerful place because you have that curiosity of two people really into a brand new subject um, learning together and then also uh, at least one of them or perhaps both of them who have expertise from different areas that are coming together. Um, but I think I think that power of curiosity and, two, and people, um, it could be two or it could be multiple people, but people who uh, are united by passion is really uh, exciting and something that you know, worth exploring. So one one of the things that Monica has worked hard on um, over the last five years, worth identifying and thinking about in our project is uh, spending a, doing daily check-ins. Um, she's done a lot with video. You know, I do I do it with writing with kids and audio. But doing daily check-ins, she calls it detox, and I've adopted her word, um, to, to identify your passion, to say, you know, what are you thinking now to, uh, over time? And I think what, what, what she was describing there is that as, so there needs to be a technology that collects that, you know, the curiosities, the passions over time, and that somehow identifies, okay, here here are the tags that we're noticing um, in in your in your expressions of of your curiosities, and here are some people who you might want to work with. Um, and, but I don't know if if there's an algorithm that does that, or we do that now. I'm not, well, well you, know, yeah. you know, the, the the web platform could could that we sort of talked about could do something like that. And I think 
I think in addition to that, you could also collect little artifacts that might be little projects, uh, little you know materials, resources, uh, references, you know things like that that are related. As people explore their curiosity, they could they they it would be sort of a hyper web notebook kind of thing um, that that could then. Um, Kevin, could I ha can I stop you? And say, could you sure. break that down more? Hyperweb notebook kind of thing. Well, you know, well, <laughs> come on. So, I have, haven't you read? You're the, you're the engineer. Paper? Come on. <laughs> haven't you Go read Vladimir Bush's original paper that invented right. the internet? Uh, yeah, right. So, um, so um, the idea is that that you know it's just sort of a, like a. a um, I, I think when Monica was talking about it originally, I don't know if she can still hear me, but uh, there, there was the. Uh, Wiki, Wikipedia a thing, which, you know, Wikipedia is kind of that, although it's a curated thing, and it's kind of, and, and, and there may be some need for that, but, but basically, um, it's trying to be an encyclopedia, but the basic idea of, of, a, of a corpus that is interlinked and references other things and things like that, it's basically the same structural idea, so... Uh, but semantically, it's a little different in that um, it's or it's oriented around curiosity. I, I, I like this idea of rather than uh, uh, orienting it around ontologies and and, and dividing it uh, taxonomically around you know different kind of you know branches of the tree of knowledge. Um, it's uh, you know like I'm curious about you know climate or I'm curious about birds or I'm curious about you know why. You know why I perceive color the way I do, or what, whatever, whatever the curiosities are, and then um, and then hanging off of each of those curiosities uh, could be, you know, what people have learned, uh, maybe activities that they've done to to learn stuff. Um, uh, um, maybe you know the teacher has come up with a cool activity in classroom, or with the maker they've come up with a cool project to build that would build sensors and things like that, whatever. And then um, um, the, the reason it becomes useful, though, is, is that it becomes searchable so that when you identify your curiosity, you somehow get pointed to things that might be related. So there does have to be some kind of... So you of, end up with a path of some sort. Yeah. There, there, there has to be some kind of classification involved here. Otherwise, you will never, you know, the stuff will get lost, or you know, you'll you'll know the stuff that you've been involved in, but not, uh, but not the stuff that um, that that you 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 just suddenly started to get interested in this new area, and other people have been there before, but you might not be able to find it if you can't figure out how to, you know, search for it. So, so it has to be sort of searchable and classifiable and things like that too. Paul, it sounds it kind of it kind of sounds. Yeah, it kind of sounded like when you were talking. I think you were perhaps this was the idea, but the the daily detox seemed like a fantastic idea, and it seemed like something that everyone should be doing already, whether it's blogging or you know documenting what they're doing um, and putting it out there for others to learn from. And I I think there's two sides of that. Is one, can we have people who adopt that as a practice, and then on the flip side, can we take the data that they're creating from that and then make those links from it, or perhaps even pull from places that they're already po they're already creating the content so you know from social media or from their contributions to you know uh, collaborative media and, and other places or if it's in a learning management system or kind of wherever it is that they're cr creating artifacts of their learning can we bring in what they already are making and and then make connections to what it seems like they're passionate about or areas that they don't even know that they would be passionate about if they were you know given it as an option so but that might be kind of lofty well, I guess that was a question I probably had for, well, I mean, any of you could answer the question. Um, Victoria, where you are right now at MIT, it seems pretty appropriate, but I was thinking, like, you'd be mining social media, like, for the word maker, for example. Uh, or is this, like, a human-entered, um, like, people are going to go to this website, and I'm just going to say, like, I, I like uh, composting and gardening, so I'm going to enter that in and I'll be a mentor for people? Or is it more like, uh, were you creating something that would, like uh, Jonathan was just talking about? Victoria, you want to take that on? But just anything you're thinking, too, please. 
We just want to get your voice back in here, Victoria. <laughs> sure. Yes. Um, Great. So I guess I I really like the idea of focusing like on sort of a tree that's based on curiosity instead of fields of knowledge. Um, although I think those do have a lot of overlap. Um, you know, like if you want to learn about, I don't know, like the way your glasses work or something, that's going to be a lot about optics or something like that. You know, I think I think those are actually very closely related, or more than like. I didn't hear the, the the thing the curiosities as opposed to what. Uh, like fields of study, like fields of study. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think those are actually very closely related. It's just a matter of an application of a field of study. Um, but I do really like the idea of focusing it around asking questions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Can I, can I say I, I think that I think that uh, the question about whether or not it's like gathering stuff from other places or whether it's a community, um, I think that gathering stuff from other places. I mean, people try to do that. I mean, there's like Hackaday for people who like hackers and stuff like that. But then it's kind of like it, it's it's a very passive experience because you're reading something that's been curated for you. You're reading a magazine basically, and um, where I think that it has to be something that's more interactive. It has to be a community, I think, and it has to be like, like you said, like uh, I, I'm passionate about composting, and um, you know, like anybody want to learn how to, you know, make stuff rot, you know, like I'm your man. <laughs> that would be, you know, that would be, you know, that would be cool. I think, uh, and whereas, you know, like, you know, I can, I can quickly, you know, give you, you know, 15 links on, you know, interesting composting sites, but like then you're gonna have to go read them, and then. You might say, "Oh, huh, that's interesting," and then you know, not do anything. But like, if you get somebody who's like, "Okay, now go out and get some worms," you know, dig around in the leaves, get some worms, and like, you know, let's put this in a shoebox, and then you know, feed it your banana peels, and you know, tell me what happens the next day, and you know, you got, you got something you know interesting going on there. I think. Yeah, I agree a lot with what you're saying. I think that's kind of where the teacher comes in is kind of motivating you to pursue your curiosity. I think like. If I wanted to learn about compost, I could easily just go and Google it right now, and you know, yeah, it has 15 links about it. But that's that's not that's passive learning, which is not the direction we want to be headed in. Monica, you want to jump back in at some point, or while we have you? Um, I guess just adding a little more of the vision is if the city mm -hmm. is the school, and now we've gotten rid of seat time and test scores. Um, then you are spending three minutes sharing in a place that's gathering your data. Your curiosity is your, I mean, your data is your self-talk about curiosity. Mm -hmm. Gathering that for three minutes a day, 30 minutes a day you're spending with a group just to make sure everyone's known by someone. Now you've got 23 plus hours um, to go in the city into all these maker spaces or um, recording studios or library. Um, so now it's like summer vacation all the time. Um, and we're just trusting that curiosity will make people rich enough in their, and deep enough in their learning. So, so I just wanted to add that so that, because the vision, definitely, the doing is so huge, you know. Um. So where does the app fit that you've thought about developing so far in that, in that, in that 23 hours? Um, it, a lot of places, but um, initially, because again, if, if we want this to go anywhere, it's got to be so simple. It's mm -hmm. underneath, there's a lot of complexity, but it's got to be so simple. So initially, all you have to have is three minutes talking into the device, a wearable device or something. Um, then what the, app, what the app actually does, though, is makes these networked individualism webs around each individual. They're the center node, and all the outside nodes are the curiosities or the connections they've made because of those curiosities. Um, and then it's those, like, Paul, your, your networked individualism would talk to mine. It would actually look at all of them in the city, all of them globally, and suggest so, connections on a daily basis. So that somehow happens um, through code? Are, are they tagged? Yeah. It would be, a, it would be like a word recognition. Recognition. So, like, here's an example, and um, it's just one that I always use. But say, say Paul and I, we, that morning or whenever, when we we shared our self talk, we we were curious about China. 
So it told us to meet up in the coffee house or the library or whatever. So we meet up, and Paul goes, you know, we talk a little bit. Paul goes, dang, I meant China the country. And I say, dang, I meant China the plate. So then you have the option. Um, you can just play the system and say that all the time. You know, you can just keep saying really weird stuff. Or you can realize that the, the better my verbiage is, the more chance the technology has to connect me to my tribe. The whole idea is to shorten the time between your intention and your action every day. That lag time is where we get the perception that if people are set free, they're going to be lazy and not do anything. So if the technology can help us with that lag time every day, being flexible to change, be able to change your mind every day, that seems to be what could um, let the true natural learning, insatiable natural learning, take its course. So, so you're talking about sort of a, um, a, a hyperlinked salon, if you will. Oh, cool. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, but uh, 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 given, I mean, if if technology isn't up to the task, uh, I guess you could also have you could have people um, either themselves tag things, or you could have editors look at them and try to relate them. Maybe. Yeah. Over the last five years, we've done several iterations. So we started with the Google Doc, you know, and just. Mm -hmm. and connecting that way. We did um, video self-talks and, you know, connected per what people would say. That way we were trying to get back again to the authenticity um, mm -hmm. of a person rather than in front of people you might say things that would please your parents or that would please your teacher or, you know, that might be your only, maybe you have ten choices. We wanted to get to the, the thing that you, could, that you couldn't not do. Um, then we tried um, chalkboards outside of a coffee house where people would just list anonymously their curiosities and then bring those inside um, showing people that there's ten people that want to build a tree house you know, in, in the community and then if they, if they want to at that point help them connect to those other people um, so yeah we've tried several iterations and um, the brain is a software that's very similar to what we envision would happen but at this point, it doesn't really dance with other brains. But it is just simply you're the center, or whatever you make. But say the person's the center, and then all the other nodes just happen as you would talk or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And then they would they would recognize the you know China. They'd recognize that two people said China. The good part about it is because you know it happens every day. It's not a big deal if we met up and it didn't work out. Nobody feels bad. You don't have that awkward social because you know you, it's like Groundhog Day or 51st dates you got another chance tomorrow very cool so we have 10 minutes left together 12 minutes maybe um, and, and I, 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 can't, I don't know I, I'm very patient in this and you guys have been too in the kind of big talk and so forth um, but getting a little bit real would be interesting too like trying to find some examples or something. So I want to I throw it to Victoria again. And what if MIT were run this way? Hmm. <laughs> or, or a class at MIT? Or <laughs> um, I think it would be very different. Um, so like, as a computer science student, mm -hmm. it's interesting to think about how that would fit in there, just because, you know, computer science isn't like a an overly tangible thing. I guess it would be in terms of, you know, applying your curiosity about data or something like that, and then using computer science as a tool rather than learning about computer science itself. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess... That's, that's an interesting question, though, i got to say, because not everything is tangible, you know? Not everything is makeable in the yeah. same kind of way. But, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I um, interrupted you, though. Yeah. I mean, the only, like... I have, I have some friends at Olin, um, which is a college of engineering, but they're very hands-on. Um, and I think they are a lot more, you know, curiosity-based, but they're, like, they're very into project-based learning, and it's a lot more individualized. Um, and I really like that style of learning. I just don't know how well it would work for all, like, all fields. So. I, I think, I think... Uh, uh, so, so I, 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 I've, 
there, there is a realization of this in in um, in the in the real world uh, in in terms of um, uh, meetups. So here in here in Boston, we have a pretty active you know uh, set of different kind of meetups. They all are pretty much organized around Meetup.com, and um, there are sort of broad topics that are a meetup. Uh, I have one that's a live, you know, people who are interested in making stuff in libraries. Uh, but like there's also robotics and there's, uh, uh, there's one that I belong to called uh, Boston Artist Plus Coders. So it's people who either identify as an artist or as a programmer. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, um, and so it brings really interesting people together and they have interesting conversations. And sometimes there's a, a very, um, like specific topic, like you know, say uh, that people are curious about, like uh, digital currency or something like that. But other times, it's uh, let's get together, have drinks, and talk about what we've been doing. And uh, and so um, so those kind of things um, uh, happen, and the the mediation of the meetup platform, you know, makes it happen and brings it together. However, it it's um, it's a little bit flash in the pan because, um, you know, while I might have a great experience, um, no one else can can learn from my experience except for the people who were with me at the time, right? And so the idea of giving some permanence to that, I think, is 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 the the newer idea uh, that I think Monica is kind of talking about in terms of um, um, making it persist in some way so that um, People can then, you know, like like you said, find your tribe uh, and mm -hmm. and and continue to grow stuff there, right? Is that sound right, Monica? I would say yes in in regard to the connections, for sure. You know, um, as, as in regard to the content, I think it's great to have places to store that so people have. But I mean, Victoria even mentioned. I mean, we can Google anything, and that's. So, so yeah, just just having something that could maintain and, and sustain and those connections could keep happening, you know, new synapses happening all the time, unlikely ones, tribal likely ones. Right. I, I think I think they think the problem with uh, with things like um, uh, meetup, which are temporal based, which where they have a, a specific date. Like there's a lot of interesting people in my meetup group that, and we always have a problem finding a date that everybody can make make right. But if you have something, some other kind of conversation that can continue to go on, um, uh, and and I have another group that I, I have a tribe that I belong to, uh, which has open source hardware development, and uh, we're very distributed. I'm in Boston. One of the guys is in Virginia. One guy's in uh, in Mumbai, India. And we do everything virtually. We do a lot of Google Hangouts and stuff like that. And uh, uh, and we accomplish, you know, really great things together. Uh, and so I think that um, something that brings people together and maintains those connections is important. Um, like you said, the, the 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 artifacts may may not be incredibly valuable except as a reminder and a way to, to, to bring new people in. Uh, one of the challenges that we face in my open source hardware group is how do we get new people in because they're not necessarily always involved in those hangouts and stuff like that but um, you know they do see our projects and stuff but we, we're, we're struggling with that like how do we like attract new people to participate in our creative process because we always would like to have more people participating in our creative process. I feel like that's a that's a part where machine learning can come in. I think what you're saying about, you know, suggesting new topics to like explore or something like that, um, I think machine learning would be great at that. If you have, you know, uh, five past topics someone has been curious about, you can easily predict the sixth one. You can easily do what? You can easily predict a new topic for them to explore, and you know a new group of people they can meet. Hmm. Is that related to what you're studying? Could you help us do that? Um, I mean, I'm definitely interested in machine learning. I think there are actually a lot of tools out there already that could do some more things, just in terms of you know how close are these two words together, 
Um, I guess we would want something a little bit higher level than that, but that would be a good starting place. Break down machine learning for me, though, because it sounds smaller than it is, I think. Okay, so, um, I mean, like, what I'm thinking of right now is uh, there's a way you can look at lots of documents and discover how closely two words are related to each other. Mm -hmm. And so basically, if you have um, five words that all appeal to this one person, that they're all curious about these five words, right? Then we can easily predict a new word based on what, what's the closest to these, the cluster of these five. Mm -hmm. if, that, if that makes sense. It does, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let me just mention um, that one of the uh, pieces of feedback that we got at MIT uh, during the uh, design shop was to, to check out our goods. And that's something that I will do and see further about that. I mean, perhaps, so if you don't know about ourgoods.org, it's a really interesting, like, the philosophical economic base of that work. Is 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 such a, a, a thing worth um, opening up to? <laughs> What's it called? Ourgoods.org. So uh, and so it's a barter network, and it's it started uh, right after the economic crisis in 2008, if I have that correct. And uh, people said, you know, maybe we don't have to pay artists. Uh, maybe I can say. You know, bring me uh, fresh food for the next three weeks, and when you bring it, I'll teach you how to tie knots. Um, so, uh, so it's kind of you barter, you barter your, you know, what you have. And and one of the questions that seems to uh, be answered tonight, but I think it's still interesting to think about, is um, like the maker, what the maker brings to the barter situation is clear. What the student teacher brings is insatiable curiosity, right? Um, but I'm not sure exactly how that gets defined. So in this in this model, but so just uh, just thinking about real world and um, meetup is one way to think about it. Um, I th I thought looking into and talking to these people at ourgoods.org is another thing we might do. And and Jonathan. Can you mention again the one that you found? I don't mean to put you on the spot, but do you, or that was mentioned to you? It was in Texas somewhere. Oops, you're, you're muted. There we go. Sorry there. about that. Um, I think it's called Nepris, uh, mm -hmm. N-E-P-R-I-S, and it looks like it's focused on connecting teachers with industry experts, and I'll post that in the, in the chat. Cool. I so, looked at that. That looked very similar to what, what our idea was for a design shop. Say more. In what way? Yeah. Um, just in terms of you know connecting industry people with teachers, it seems to have the same goal, and it the the website looked pretty good to me. So so mm. I haven't I haven't I haven't looked at it in depth, but but I had a different I had I I had a different vision of it, which was that it was less about just sort of uh, connecting people up so that they could go off and be by themselves, uh, but uh, but more of an ongoing conversation. And uh, and 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 that's sort of the difference. And you and said community earlier too, quite yeah, exactly. Yeah, and make yeah. and really build a com build a community, and also uh, the the other thing about uh, sort of hooking up people one on one is that while they might be able to you know uh, mediate some some something over the web or something like that if they're in d disparate places, it still has um, um, uh, you know a, a a rich town poor town you know sort of Problem there, whereas you know, I really wanted, I really wanted to, um, you know, enable, um, you know, people in less advantaged communities to be able to take advantage of these, of these, of these uh, interesting uh, resources and ideas and stuff like that too. Yeah. But I could be wrong about Netflix because I, I haven't looked at it that much. So. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I mean, I, th I, I don't think anything is, is you know, as good as our idea. No, <laughs> we just have to <laughs> make it happen, man. You have to put it in a 3D printer. Um, no, I, I, I'm sorry. So I, I'm getting silly here at the end. Chris, can you uh, bring us down um, and and assure us that it's okay to keep talking like this for a while before we? Well, yeah, I had a product. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just had a 
Let's all address that question. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I should have yeah. asked it earlier, but you know, the process that you're using to think all this through, like I'm familiar with, like uh, the IDEO design thinking for educators stuff. Um, and and at this point, um, in that, like you're at the ideation phase, <laughs> and so um, I mean, it strikes me as like you're at the you're ready to do the experiment stuff um, with the communities that you're in, right? So, Paul, your students in the Bronx, point, yeah. mm -hmm. if you could find, I think you're right, you know, like, can we find specific examples of things that work and analyze how those things work is another way to approach it instead of a systems kind of way, um, you know, an inductive kind of thing. Um, I always like to look at what works and try to, you know, analyze why that works. Thank you. That's that's really useful, Jonathan. Last uh, I think I... Paul and I were both laughing because during the weekend we went through all the phases of the traditional IDEO we're done. process. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so now we just have to figure out how to how to how to to use the prize uh, money, I guess. But the uh, but I think that's a great idea. Is how do we identify what does work? And I think in in both face to face and then also and like there are tons of online communities. Like Meetup is one where it bridges online and 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 uh, you know the physical, but um, you know there's there's tons of communities that sprout up and sites that allow these communities to come up. And what 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 what's the key aspects to successful? And I'm sure that, and, you know there's tons of, of of research that's been done on this. But um, how can we take the ideas behind what makes a successful um, vibrant community and and bring that to the introductions that we're hoping to make in this? I think is important. And then also trying to, like Paul was saying before, is trying to to bring it down so we can make something real. Um, and and figure out like what what corner are we going to bite off and start chewing on? Kevin, what are you thinking? Um, I think um, my hit my brain's full. <laughs> 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 I, I I there's a lot to digest. I think uh, I, you know I I was really inspired by some of the ideas around. Um, uh, the sh sharing curiosities and um, um, and I, I do also feel that I'm a bit attached to my idea of product and so uh, uh, yeah and 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 I, I and um, uh, I think it's I think it's something for me for myself to look at to see whether that's actually relevant or if, if something really more meaningful can come out of it just the sheer connections uh, but I am concerned that it wants to make it, we want we want something that will be lasting and can um, allow people to connect in a way that doesn't depend upon a lot of sort of either physical proximity or uh, temporal convenience. Victoria, any last thoughts? Um, yeah, I guess I also have a lot to think about after this. Um, yeah, I think there were some great ideas. I'm trying to, I guess right now I'm trying to think about how I would imagine this fitting into MIT after you asked that question, um, and, and how computer science fits into all of this. So that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking about. That's a, that's a great idea, so like that. And, and I, I want to say that, that um, part of what I'll take from tonight are some of the narratives. Jonathan's narrative um, about the mapping the trees, um, Kevin's narrative about your open source development group, and and uh, and Victoria, your narrative about um, and there are others, but your narrative about working with the guy in the garage next door, um, and and so just to echo what Chris said right there at the beginning on this last round, um, I think I think uh, documenting some of those narratives would be useful to do as we figure out what this product is that we're imagining. Um, and thank you all for being so patient. I mean, I think um, in this, um, there's so much more we could learn from each other. I just want to say that we're here every Wednesday night. You guys now are, are veterans. Come back anytime it looks interesting to you. Um, I, let me uh, and let me announce that next week Nate Otto is I, Nate. I, I saw you in the chat room earlier. If you're still around, um, let me burn your ear here for a second. I hope 
I think he is organizing a show for us around a case study that he just recently published called Establishing the Value of Badges for Earners, which I found totally fascinating. Um, and um, he's going to help us think that through a little bit next week with some people who are in that case study. Um, and uh, he did it with Christine Chow, I should say. Uh, you can just Google that and you'll find it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, all right, so we're going to uh, mess with that next week. Thank you all. Um, we're here every Wednesday, and we've been doing this several years. Um, it was started as a channel of the EdTech Talk. It's the EdTech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network that Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo set up several years ago. And uh, this will be up on YouTube right away, and eventually I'll get it out as a podcast. Sorry, folks. Busy life. Brand new school. Um, <laughs> thank you all, um, and we'll see you soon. Talk to you. Thanks. Oh, Thanks I didn't say thank you to Monica. To Monica, thank you so much um, for all your contributions here tonight, too. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.